In August 2007, they received the call they had prayed for. Author Peter Steckel was visiting the crash site to gather research for his book about the fatal flight when he discovered another frozen body. Well, so I, I had gotten the GPS coordinates from the National Park Service from where Leo Mustadin was found. And one of my long-term hiking partners and I went into the Mendel Glacier and thinking that we would explore the area and find airplane wreckage. And my intention was with the GPS coordinates of Leo Mustanen to walk to the site where his body had been found. I wanted to sit there and look at the scene and try to understand, um, try to picture how things have been over the last 62 years since the plane had crashed. And so I was, um, I was walking towards that, that site when I saw something that looked like a tree, a little tree, maybe four feet tall, that had been killed by the frost and was leaning over a rock. And so um, this is at nearly 13,000 feet in elevation. The air is thin, and your brain doesn't work quite as swiftly as it does at sea level. So it took me a moment to realize that there aren't even any grasses growing around here. How could there be a tree? And just at that moment, the sun was shining on an object, on what I thought was a tree, that looked like a gold ring. So I was drawn closer to the object, and as I got closer, maybe 100 or 200 feet away, I realized that, it, of course, it wasn't a tree, that, that the ring was on a finger, and the finger was attached to a person. And that's when I realized I'd found the second of the four people from the airplane. DNA testing at the POW MIA Accounting Command in Hawaii confirmed this was the body of Cadet Ernest Glenn Munn. His long journey back home finally came in May, when his body was flown from Hawaii to Pittsburgh International Airport. Did I tell you I just wanted to get out and hug that casket? I just felt like he's there and I wanted to hug him. So sad in a way and, and emotional and I just don't know I just I'm just <laughs> trying to you know get settled here. <laughs> a special military service followed a few days later near Munn's hometown of Pleasant Grove, Ohio. The wooden box. The wooden box holds the remains of a veteran finally brought home. From 1942, all these years, hoping, wondering, gladness, tears. Many years has slipped away, not knowing where he was. He is now home with his family today. Ernest Glenn has been brought home in full uniform, finally to be laid to rest as his sisters waited for him while he was on the mountain crest. Welcome home, Ernest Glenn Mudd. Welcome home, son. Life goes on here on Maple Street. People come and go, some will never meet. He He's, he's a brother to me and to all the people that serve the uniform. And to bring him home to his family is just, it's just an honor to, to, to be here um, and to travel uh, with him to be his escort to make sure he gets home. I mean, it, it, there's, there's a tremendous sense of pride. To find someone after all these years, it's just it's unbelievable. I mean, I, uh, you know, there's always hope. I mean, for people who have, have somebody missing, this is a reminder that there is hope and that somebody uh, may find one of their missing, you know, uh, sons or daughters or whoever they are. Yeah. I find that much more optimistic because if they found two, that means the other two are probably somewhere in that vicinity. So it's not been a, a negative experience. It's been a very positive experience. I just think it's just a matter of time. Wouldn't you agree, Nancy? Oh, I think that yeah. this has definitely been a real highlight yes. know, finding because now it gives us hope and encouragement that our uncle also will be found. Yeah. It's really a relief to know that he's home. 
I think so too. I think it's an answer to our prayers. According to the military, there are 78,000 World War II soldiers still missing. But Glenn Munn makes one less. He was laid to rest in the family cemetery next to his mother and father. For Outlook, I'm Carrie Brown. Life goes on. Here on Maple Street.